guys, college football bowl season is upon us. We are going to talk about power five, our five questions in college football that are the most hot button right now. Of course, starting off with what, who is the best team in college football? I'm going LSU. They had the six most difficult strength of schedule heading down the stretch. A lot of people are arguing Clemson, but when you look at just the strength of schedule alone, yes, both teams played well, but you add in Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence didn't really heat up until the back half of the season. So I'm going LSU. Yeah, I'm right there with you. You know, a reasonable case can be made for all three, but the LSU offense has been incredible. I mean, they're first in EPA per play this season, have the third largest increase from last year to this year, and they have the highest graded quarterback in college football in Joe Burrow. And Joe Brady, the passing game coordinator, created a great scheme that fits his strengths and needs, and then they have one of the best wide receiver duos in the nation, too, in Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, who fit right in. So I think this LSU offense is the best, so I think they're deserving of that number one. Yeah, I think the, the issue is they're most deserving of the number one spot. But I think Clemson, you can make the argument that they are the best. For, for me, it's you know playing the ACC, it's an error of omission and not commission. They haven't looked poor against any team other than North Carolina. And over the past six weeks, they've been, you know, they've been gangbusters beating every team by you know, multiple, multiple scores. So for me, when I look into there, I look at the, you know, the talent, and I think they're just as good as LSU. And you know, Brett Venables, for example, last season came out of nowhere in the Alabama game schemed them up really well. So I, I, I'm taking Clemson here. I'm going to go LSU. I think LSU makes the most sense. They have the best offense in college football, averaging 0.291 EPA per play. That leads all of college football. They have the highest graded quarterback. I love the receiver duo that Trash mentions. It's an easy pick for me. I'm going LSU. All right. So we talked a little bit about the quarterbacks in that first answer, but let's talk about who is the best quarterback in college football. I'm going LSU. I mean, Joe Burrow. I mean, Joe Burrow of LSU has been incredible. He leads all uh, college football in PFF passing grade. He's been fantastic on NFL throws. Mike and I on the podcast talk about him being one of the best prospects we've ever seen in the college era at the quarterback position. He makes those throws, you know, 10 plus yards down the football field. It's very accurate. 78% completion percentage. Never fell below 70% in any one game this year. It was incredible. Yeah, all four of these quarterbacks can make, you know, lay claim to some very good superlatives here. But for me, it does go Joe Burrow. It's closer than people think, though. Burrow this season is the most deserving of the best quarterback honor, you know, more than half a win above any other quarterback in college football. But coming into the season, Trevor Lawrence was the the highest graded guy, and he's, you know, lived up to that over the past six weeks. So it's it's Burrow, but it's closer than people think. Yeah, I mean, no disagreements there, Joe Burrow, for me. And, you know, as you said, it is closer than people think. I mean, it's a tight race because Trevor Lawrence over the last six weeks, highest graded quarterback, and then Justin Fields. I kind of feel like he got overshadowed a little bit by Joe Burrow's complete 180. You know, he is our highest graded quarterback from a clean pocket and the best Big Ten quarterback we've ever seen. That being said, Joe Burrow, he makes throws in unfavorable situations that no one has been able to match, whether he's under pressure, throwing it into a tight window, you made a great point. I mean, these are NFL throws. You know, whenever I'm feeling down, I go back, turn on that Texas game, and he was remarkable. So, I mean, it has to be Joe Burrow. Yeah, I'm going Joe Burrow as well. 32 big-time throws. Very few plays where he made a decision that was questionable. As you said, his decision-making got better. And in your article, you wrote just about the coaching scheme and the new personnel package and using the weapons that they have and building a team around your best players and how it's really benefited both LSU and, of course, Joe Burrow this season. You talked about Justin Fields. He maybe got overshadowed by that OSU defense. So who has the best defense in college football? I'm going OSU for all of those reasons. Both their defensive front and their secondary was insane this season. Rattle off any name, starting with, of course, Chase Young. And you've got an NFL quarterback or NFL caliber defenseman. Yeah, I think with Ohio State, it's number one. I think it's a two-man race between Clemson and Ohio State. Right now, Clemson leads all college football and EPA per play allowed. Ohio State right there at number two, and I think they have the better players, and that's reflected in PFF's grade. Overall defensive grade, Ohio State leads all of college football. Chase Young, probably a top-two pick, easily a top-two pick. Jeffrey Akuda, a former five-star prospect with all of the ball production now. This year, Sean Wade gets overlooked in that secondary. It's such a good group on the back end in the secondary, defending the pass in coverage. It's a very good group up front with Chase Young leading the way as a pass rusher. Yeah, we see with secondary allows the quarterback to have to hold on to the ball longer, means guys like Chase Young can get home. So when you have that, you know, that combo there, it is it is lethal for Ohio State. For Clemson, it's hard because their schedule wasn't great, but they you know performed very well defensively most of the season. The other two teams I don't think can lay claim. LSU struggled with Alabama. They struggled with Ole Miss. And then, of course, Oklahoma. You know, they they, they struggled with Baylor. They struggled with uh, Iowa State. So Houston. <laughs> Houston. Those teams, those teams really don't belong, but it is Ohio State or Clemson. 
I'm gonna, I, I think it's closer than people think again because of Brett Benables and, and the scheme that he can create. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it is closer, but I think I'm leaning more towards Ohio State here. And we know Chase Young's been great. We know all of his numbers, but I think the secondary needs more credit than what they're getting. I mean, Sean Wade's a top 10 slot cornerback in PFF grade right now. And the outside cornerbacks, Damon Arnett and Jeff Akuda, have combined to allow just one touchdown on their targets this year. I mean, wow. that's the lowest among any unit in the FBS by significant margin, not to mention they're not allowing any first downs. So I think that duo right there really takes them to the next level. So I'm going Ohio State. So who's the team that we haven't mentioned that's currently in the college football playoff, and that's Oklahoma. We didn't mention them in any of our answers, really because this year is kind of an outlier amongst college football playoff years where typically you have one team that is championship caliber team sitting on the outside. This year you have three and then everybody else. So the hot button topic right now is should we expand the college football playoff? What do we PFF think? I think it should be expanded. I know the, the biggest reason you don't expand it because it won't be competitive, and I don't think it would be competitive this year. You throw Oregon into the mix, hell, even having Oklahoma in there, they're not going to do a ton of damage in the college football playoff. But I think with the opportunity for other teams to legitimately chase a college football playoff championship, parity starts to get better, competition starts to get better. I think a team like Memphis can recruit better when they know that team is capable of chasing the big dance, and I think that's what's really important. In five years, ten years' time, if you allow eight – I know 16 teams gets a little aggressive, but if you allow more teams in, it makes it easier to recruit for those smaller schools and actually compete with an Alabama down the road. Yeah, I mean, when an eight, with an 18 playoff, you're almost assured that the best team's going to be in there. But the issue then becomes, even if that team's 70-30 to win the first round, you take a team from 40% to win the title to 30% just by virtue of having to go uh, through another game. So the question is, is does the best team win the majority of the time? And the answer is very likely not if you expand it to eight teams. But to your point... Uh, about two loss teams making it. Teams, I think, will be more take more risks in terms of scheduling. Oregon, you know, got screwed this year because they scheduled Auburn in Week One. We're going to see more of those games if two losses isn't as lethal as it is right now. So I, I, I'm in favor of it, but there are, you know, obviously the downsides. Yeah, I'm all for the 18 playoff because I mean, as you said, this year's kind of an outlier in a sense where we didn't have that extra team where we're debating heavily like we had over the last few years. And you know, over at PFF.com, Ben Brown, he wrote a great article introducing wins above average and it kind of showed that these last two seasons there's been two teams that didn't make the college football playoff that should have and really this year we're a freak you know injury away from having the same debate with Tua Tonga Viola so I mean I think there is a good reasoning to expand it and I think it would create a competitive balance as you said yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go yes as well mostly because a lot of people argue that it if we do expand it, it would dilute the, the regular season, but I think that it would actually make the regular season more compelling because those one loss teams, their fan bases are still invested because yep. they still have the opportunity to potential, potentially make the push, not to mention down the stretch, the bowl games become more relevant, more NFL caliber players actually play in the bowl games because they matter, all of that good stuff. So I'm going yes. So in the 18 playoff, let's fire off a quick 18 seed. I'm going to start at number one, LSU. I'm going to go Ohio State. That defense is good. It's pretty easy. Clemson at three then. I, I'm, I'm taking Oklahoma out of the mix. I'm going Alabama at four. I think the college football playoff is better with Alabama. All right. Then Oklahoma five for me. Yeah, I got to go Oregon if we're following that. Yeah, for me then it, it, it comes down to, uh, in this case, I think it's Georgia then. I'm going Minnesota. Tanner Morgan, sign me up. Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman. I think that offense is great. No doubt. And if a group of five team were in it, can we all agree it would be Memphis? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Transitioning back to reality here for a second and the four team college football playoff that we have over the next couple of weeks, who wins this four seed? I'm going Clemson. Trevor Lawrence has lost one game in his, co his football career. That goes back to high school. I don't think he loses in this college football playoff. I think he takes home the W. Yeah, I agree with Austin here. I think, you know, Clemson's a far bigger favorite, I think, in th this first round that people want to give them credit for. And then I think they match up well with LSU because LSU, his defense is a little bit overrated. Yeah, I mean, the LSU defense, I mean, I am worried about that. But at the end of the day, they have the easier path to victory. So I'm going LSU. They have the better quarterback and the better offense. Yeah, everything you said, I'm going LSU, plus the fact that Clemson hasn't faced really any adversity, starting with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback against a, a really – big defense so far this season. So I think that Ohio State's defense, starting with Chase Young, Akuda, whoever you want to say, might slap him in the face and give him a reality check. So I'm going LSU. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.